Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. My partner gets excited <laughs> because I show him the future. The difficulty is always the same. You want it now. Old soul, there's no hurry because you're going to be here to see it. You may look a little different, but you're going to be here to see it. And what I mean by this is the lineage of those and the akash of those in this room is going to be part of the future. No matter how old you are at this point in time, no matter what you think that you're a part of at this time, I would like to tell you that the old soul is going to continue. And that this transition to a new energy on the planet is temporary. You're going to start to see results. There's a fast track system that is going to echo what you want. Consciousness has energy. The energy is seen and measured and is part of the fast track system. There is a system in place to give back to you on the grids what you are endeavoring to create as an old soul. We told you this before. An old soul carries more conscious energy weight than a new one does. The Akash absolutely has what I will call stripes. <laughs> what I mean by that is you become a weight and authority on the consciousness of the planet because of your experience. You weigh in harder than a newbie does, more profound than anyone else. A group of old souls in prayer is unstoppable. Almost. And I want to talk about that. I would love to give you physics that you've not discovered yet that helps you to understand some things that are puzzles. I may try. But before I do that, I want to give you this. Dear ones, your old souls, in this room, you can feel it. What you think and what you do creates the timing of peace on earth. Some of you will have the opportunity to take the high road when all you've done is be forced into the low one. And I may talk cryptically, but I am talking to those in the room. Opportunities given that you didn't expect in areas you didn't plan would be there. And a decision that you will make actually helping the planet incrementally, one by one, because you see things differently. There's an awakening process in all of you. And you can feel it. And one of the attributes of this awakening process that I want you to look for is joy. The creative source is benevolent. It likes to laugh. <laughs> there is no greater healing emotion on the planet than laughter and celebration. I want you to look for that. I want you to look for that in ceremony. I want you to change what you do in ceremony. The idea that you would gather together and somehow look at the ground and close your eyes and pretend to be mournful because you're in touch with spirit is old energy. Are you understanding this? What about a celebration where you tell a joke? <laughs> 
What about a celebration where in order to get something going, you might even tickle each other's feet? Something to create a celebration of joy and laughter while you go into a meditative state that will amplify it greatly. Old energy says you have to be depressed. <laughs> At least that's the way it looks. We look down in a meditative circle, nobody says anything, there's always quiet, and you're all depressed. <laughs> what else are we supposed to think? Do you laugh during your meditations? No. Does it disturb the energy? Oh, the teachers will say, oh yes, don't disturb the energy with laughter. <laughs> Why don't you try it and see what it does to the energy? You might have healings right there, right then. That's what I want to tell you right now. There are some of you who needed to hear this because you're invested in creating ceremony. Others of you in the room will have choices to make soon, which I will call high and low road choices. Same old, same old, or something you know is better, but a little harder and more risky. I'm going to tell you, there's a hand that's ready to hold yours in the risk department when it comes to light. You understanding this? There are puzzles in spirituality, but they're not. I'll open a door just slightly tonight. Just slightly. Trying to explain to you something my partner has given you before. When we say that physics is consciousness and consciousness is physics we're talking about energy what is your idea when somebody says did you feel the energy of the prayer did you feel the energy of the meditation are these just words that pass through your ears and they're metaphysical and esoteric and isn't it lovely or is there substance? How do you define energy? Is it something you feel? Is it something you measure? Let's talk very, very simply about energy. Long ago, basic science realized that energy is not destroyable. You cannot destroy it. You can change it. And in certain situations where energy meets energy, there will be then another energy, but it, it is not creating new energy, it's simply morphing. In some places of the universe, it gathers energy from another place. It looks like it is creating, it is not. It's simply moving it around. You might say energy then is absolute. There are those who would say there is no more energy in the universe today than at the moment of what you called the Big Bang, which by the way, there was no such thing. There was a beginning and there was an energetic start, but it was not an explosion and it was not a bang. It was a quantum event of an intersection of what we have called dimensional membranes. We don't expect you to understand that. We don't want you to. It's not needed. But energy is something you should be able to feel, measure, work with, compute, and predict. On the planet right now, you work with certain kinds of energy very well. You understand them. You can compute them. You can measure them. You can predict them. You use them in your machines. That's energy. You create energy in order to fuel your house. That's energy. But when it comes to consciousness, you don't think of it the same way. So tonight, right now, I want you to think of it the same way. Is it possible that there is a system that is a multidimensional system where what you create with your thoughts is as palatable as an electric current? 
We say palatable, that means that is digestible to your consciousness logic. That's what we say palatable, just like food. You can eat it, enjoy it, enjoy it, it becomes yours. It's palatable to think that your consciousness could be measured. Is it possible you could have a consciousness meter measuring that which you think not on any scale that you have on this planet at the moment. Nothing like you have. I'm talking about a quantum measuring device. A way you could see the energy you create when you focus your mind. If you had that right now, it changed everything. You have a group of light workers and you're going to concentrate on creating rain. Now don't do that because you're going to get it anyway. <laughs> but just as a trial, would it make a difference to Gaia? Now I want you to, I want you to follow this because there's physics involved. The earth has consciousness that is tuned to humanity and we have taught this to you before. Gaia is starting to raise its consciousness giving you back what you're starting to give to it which is not war and hatred. Gaia is starting to change. The crystalline grid is starting to change giving you remembrances of good things and not drama. We have told you this all that is around you that is in support of you and it's starting to move. So let's say you pray for rain and you need it. Together you create energy that is quantum. That is to say it works with quantum particles. The definition of quantum is a particle which is multidimensional which is called quantum. We're using the word as an overview to mean meta-dimensional things, meaning multi-dimensional things. What happens? All the energy that you're creating goes into the planet. Will it create rain? I want to ask you a question. Thousands of years, indigenous did rain dances. I want to ask you a question. Were they doing something or was it dumb? Was it simple? Was it mythology? Were they, were they celebrating the gods in the sky? Were they desperate because their crops were dying? Or did it work? <laughs> and I will tell you this, dear ones, they skewed the curve of randomness when it came to the weather and created the rain. It would literally be taken from one place, moved to their place, and rain. And they did it again and again, sometimes with results, sometimes without results, but more results than not, and that's why it lasted for thousands of years. That's why they continue to do it. You think it is perhaps foolishness. It's pagan. You know what it is? It's consciousness over physics. They knew it because it worked. Gaia is more receptive right now to these kinds of things than ever before. Ever before. A group like this can change the weather. If it is appropriate, and there are so many things that Gaia will weigh into this, if it does not rob from another place, if it's time, this planet is benevolent for you. Tree hugger, I want, you to, I want you to resound to this. What do you feel when you're out there with the divas? Can you feel them when they're, when they're showing themselves to you, when they want you to see who they are? The consciousness of Gaia has attributes constantly that are giving back to you. And you call it mother nature. Isn't it interesting it's a woman? Isn't it interesting? 
all things good born from the planet, from a feminine energy just like here. Question. Let's apply it to humans. Now you have a group of light workers that are all praying for one thing, the healing of a human being lying in a hospital bed. Now it gets tricky. Have you done that before? The answer is many of you have. You have a relative or a friend who is in trouble and you're going to send them energy. You're going to see them healed. I would like to explain what happens to that energy right now in the simplest way I can and my partner I want you to go slow because this is new I want you to understand the benevolence of it the appropriateness of it the beauty of it and why it doesn't always work because as many times as you've done it you know sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't Prayer has consciousness. Meditation has consciousness. And those consciousnesses are energy. Just like the electricity you can measure in an amp meter, there are other meters of consciousness that can measure it, and it's quantitative. It actually has attributes of measurement that have not been invented yet. It's energy. And here you are gathering it's an interesting attribute about consciousness that is multidimensional, that it does not follow the rules of linearity. That is to say, when two or more get together, it is amplified in an odd curve, not exponential, but similar to it. It's part of the math that you don't know yet. It's a base 12 equation, and it's a measurement of consciousness. You're focusing, you're seeing the healing, and here comes the energy. It was developed from you, you sent it. You didn't create it. It has come from an engine that has to do with a central source, and it comes through you and is sent to the individual. So you didn't create it out of nothing. Dear ones, you're in touch with spirit when you're meditating, when you're praying. You can feel it. You're pulling on that which is spirit and you're pushing it right to the one you want to be healed. All is well. You're doing it right. The creative source has seen you and has granted that energy transmission right from the pineal right from your consciousness, the triad of your, of your brain, and focusing it right to the one in the bed. So far, so good. Now, I told you that energy cannot be destroyed, so it's got to go somewhere. If I told you the mechanics of this, it is not that which you would understand, and even my partner is having trouble with the picture I'm showing him. The first thing that happens, the energy hits what would call a potential membrane of manifestation. It's ready to go, but it has to pass through this membrane. That particular membrane is hooked to the physics of the consciousness of the Healy, the one in the bed. They got to believe it. They've got to believe it. Oh, I didn't say they got to want it. Of course they want it. They may even give verbalization. Bring it on. I need it. I want the healing. But inside somewhere, there is something that says, but I don't believe it will happen. Because they haven't committed to it. They haven't opened their pineal. They haven't connected it to the source. The source is missing. You've got to have a circuit. The energy hits the membrane and sees the consciousness is not then compatible. It's not compliant with the rules of the physics. 
And the energy of the prayer is then dissipated through the membrane and goes somewhere else. That's all I can tell you. That's scenario one. Does this surprise you? That the one with the disease must be part of a circuit. Do you understand this? And then there are those who are part of the circuit. And I will tell you, the ones who are most part of the circuit are infants who cannot object with any intellect. And they're going to get it right away. I'll tell you other animals are ready for the healing energy. They're going to get it right away. They can't object because they're wide open. The membrane of their consciousness is ready and will accept it because there's no intellectual objection or a kosh that will get in the way. Sometimes a human will be partially ready and some of it will get through. This is complicated. We're dealing with physics, formulas, energies. Does this disappoint you that we'd want to quantify prayer? I want to give you something to think about. God is the master physicist. This is not a puzzle. This is beautiful. And when you find out about it, you're going to be able to understand it so much better when you can measure it. You can actually show it to the one in the bed, give them instructions on how to open the membrane, have it sail through, have things happen that never happen now, only because you're not aware of the beauty of the numbers. Oh boy, but can you send energy? And you do a good job of it. Dear ones, don't ever stop. Something is starting to happen on this planet to people in trouble. They're starting to believe it. They're starting to get it. They're starting to open what I would call that consciousness membrane, the compliance what I will call of the protocol that you're sending them will be compliant to the receiver that they are and they will understand at a physical level and the chemistry will change inside and there will be a healing. Don't go away puzzled by this channel. I want you to go away enhanced with the beauty of this. The beauty of this. I just gave you a snapshot of the future. I just explained prayer. I just explained meditation. And the indigenous of this planet know it. The monks in India know it. Those who have studied the ascension process thousand years ago knew it. You lost it. And now it's time to get it back. Dear ones, it's about belief. It's about owning that which is spiritual within you and changing yourself. Getting to a point where you get out of the doldrums of low self-worth and into that which is celebrate your life every day. How many of you have the courage to do that? Wake up. Put your feet on the floor and say, thank you, God, for my life. It's making a difference on the planet. This or something better today for me. I'm ready. I'll tell you, we're listening. And so is your body. I'm crying in love with humanity. And so it is.